Hey, what's up guys? So I was just about to do some surface mount soldering here and I figured, well, I might as well fire up the camera and show you exactly how I do this sort of thing. Now keep in mind, I don't do this every single day, so my methods here might not be the best way of doing it, but you know, it works great for me, so I figured I'd share with you guys exactly how I do this. So what we're doing here is working with a tiny little board here. It's basically just an AT Mega 328 uh, breakout board. So the same microcontroller used on all the Arduino boards, just on a tiny little board here with the crystal, the caps, everything you need uh, to get up and running with this microcontroller. So what, what I need to do is uh, mount the microcontroller, all the passives, and solder them. Now, of course, I could use a soldering iron and go pad by pad and, and solder all the pins to the board, but that will take forever and more than likely we'll have bri solder bridging and all that kind of stuff, which is just a total nightmare to deal with. Uh, that method does work, you know, if, it's, if you're in a pinch and you need to just get one board banged out, uh, you could simply flood all of the pins on each side of the microcontroller with solder and then use solder wick to wick the excess ex, excess solder away. Uh, that method works, I've used that a million times too, but uh, if you have a solder paste stencil like this and solder paste, it's a whole lot easier to assemble boards. So in order to get your hands on a solder paste stencil for a board, you need the top paste Gerber file, and this can be generated right out of your CAD tool. I use Eagle, so right in the CAM processor, it automatically generates the top paste file, and then I send that out. Uh, this is a stainless solder paste stencil, which is the, the best if you, can, if you can hold out and wait for one to be made. Uh, if not, you can get the Mylar plastic kinds, you know, you can order those from Polo Lou. They're laser cut. And they're a little flimsy, but they still get the job done. So, uh, again, I'll put links in the description below for everything you see here. Uh, so I do have a solder paste stencil here, the stainless one, and I've got the board, um, got some paste, and I think we're all set. So let's let's do this. I've got three boards mounted here to perfectly fit our, our target board. So I'll just go ahead and pop that in. Sometimes these boards have rough corners, so I just gotta clip that off. These are very cheap boards I've ordered uh, from China. Stick the board in, slide it up. Make sure that the stencil lines up perfectly and everything you see here is just scotch taped down, by the way, right to the bench. Okay, so that lines up perfectly with the pads. We'll go ahead and push some solder paste down on top of the stencil. There we go. Okay, that should be enough. And I'm using a an older uh, solder paste stencil that I don't need anymore for my stent or for my squeegee. Uh, you could easily use a credit card or an old gift card or whatever for this. Kind of doesn't matter. Just as long as you get a nice even coat spread out over the uh, the board as you squeegee it. So what I'm going to do is kind of coat the bottom part of the squeegee there, just to get some paste on it and then we're ready to squeegee it. So I'm just gonna squeegee that right over. Now they say you should never go over it twice, um, but you know, I've had pretty good luck going over it twice. So, uh, because that was kind of a thick coat there and I really want the solder paste height on the pads to be the same height as the stencil. So I'm going to now hold this stencil at 90 degrees and firmly pull back on the squeegee and now we have a perfect spread over those pads. All right, now this part is actually critical. If I were to just grab this, I'd probably bump this the stencil and it would it would screw up the paste on the pads and it could bridge over and and then it's like what was the point of using the uh, the stencil? So I'm going to use a pair of tweezers and gently lift up on the stencil. There we go. Perfect. And then there's our board. Perfect. So now let's get a, let's get a zoom in shot on that. Okay, so there's the board up close. You can see that we've got a perfect uh, paste spread on this board. 
I guess that's the technical term for it. <laughs> so anyway, now it's ready uh, for parts. So we're gonna go ahead and place the parts on the board and uh, let's just go ahead and do the microcontroller first. Now, if you've got a set of tweezers that you can grab the entire package like that and place it, that's, that's the best way. Or if you have um, like a little suction cup kind of device, uh, that would be even better. I don't, I just have a pair of cheap tweezers. So let's go ahead and place this. And uh, this is gonna be kind of hard for me because I got the camera like right above the board here. So I can't really see what I'm doing. But uh, let's go ahead and try this out here. I'm gonna actually grab it by the pins. Uh, drank too much coffee today. All right, well, that's good enough. Now this doesn't have to be perfect, by the way, because the capillary action of the solder paste uh, reflow process will actually kind of, you know, it'll it's gonna pull up the solder paste in the pad, and then as it reflows, it's gonna pull the parts into the pads. So it's actually pretty cool to watch, and when we get to that step, you might be able to actually see it on camera. Okay, so the processor is placed. Uh, let's place the resonator here. Oops. Good enough. Let's place a couple of these caps. And by the way, if you uh, if you don't have a solder paste stencil, I'll show you how to do it without one of those as well. Flip that resistor over, there we go. And then place that. And then the final bulk capacitor. Perfect. Okay, that is good. Now I've got a stack of PCBs here, old bare boards um, that I'm using to insulate the board uh, from my bench so I don't burn the house down here. But um, <clears throat> we could reflow the board using, you know, my homemade reflow oven that I converted from a toaster oven. Could certainly do it that way, but uh, lately I've been just using a hot air rework station. Uh, and this seems to work pretty good. So I'm going to set that temperature, I'm going to set it pretty high here. Set it to about 400 degrees C. And then um, I've got the air setting turned all the way down to a one. And the reason for that is I just don't want the air blowing the parts all over the place. All right, so we're just going to evenly, evenly move the nozzle around the board, making sure not to heat up any one spot for too long. And usually when I do this, I've got the the gun straight over the board, but since I got the camera in the way, this is gonna have to do. Um, and you kind of watch the, I don't know if you'll be able to see that on camera, but the paste kind of liquefies and then it turns, it, it almost like turns into like a, like a chalky kind of paste and then it's gonna start reflowing. And as soon as it starts reflowing, uh, usually what I'll do is get up pretty close to the pads and then make sure that the reflow process is complete and then move away as fast as I can. So that's like right at the critical temperature of the profile. Okay. And it's kind of hard for me to actually see. Up oh, there it goes. You see those? Turned. The paste immediately turned silver. There we go. That's complete. There we go. Get that cap real quick there. Look at that go. How cool is that? 
Okay. Done. Okay, that board's complete. Uh, and it looks great. What's cool about this method is, or just you know, using paste and the reflow process like this, is that the boards turn out like they were professionally made. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, cool. So I'm happy with that. Now let's let's try doing a board without a stencil. So I'm going to grab another bare board here. And when you buy the solder paste, you'll usually get a little syringe tip for it that you can screw on. Now, this syringe tip isn't the finest point uh, needle, so it's going to be kind of hard to apply paste to each of those pads, especially for the pins right here. Um, so it's going to be a little sloppy, but as you'll see, the, um, the capillary action will actually pull in all of that paste and it'll it'll work out so let's uh let's set this up real quick here okay so we're just going to apply paste to each of the pads and this is going to be kind of tricky to do here so i'll just speed up the camera here Okay, so as you can tell, it's really going on messy, and it's uh, it's definitely not going to be even for each of the pads. But um, so this is not the preferred way of doing it if you've got a stencil, but this should work. Okay, so then for the pins for the microcontroller, I'm just going to go right down and just create a little line of paste right across all of them. And we might have a, f a few bridges, oops, let's move that back over there. We might have a few bridges, but the key here is to make sure that you got paste, at least some paste, on every pad for that micro. Oops, okay, there we go. That one looks like it needs just a little bit more. And just like before, we're going to place the components. Okay. Let's get the heat gun out. Just like before. See, with the components are going to walk a little bit more because it is so sloppy. There's paste all over the place. Oh, and just in case it wasn't obvious, make sure you do this in a a well-ventilated space. Just like when you're soldering. Oh, there we go. Perfect. There it goes.
Okay, not bad, but we do have some bridging there. It needs to be cleaned up. The micro stayed on straight for the most part. So that's not too bad. So if I were to do this again, I'd make sure that I wasn't uh, so messy with the the paste dispenser there, but uh, this should be pretty easy to clean up. Let me. It's kind of again kind of hard to do all of this with the camera in the way, but it's not bad. We only have a, have a few bridges there that need to be touched up. And it's made that one a lot worse. <laughs> okay, time to get the wick out. Yeah, this is the bad side here. Not anymore. And you can kind of see what I'm doing there. Like I'm, I'm bringing this, the tip of the soldering iron in right where, right at the very edge of the pad, which will pull any solder that's stuck on the pins down to make the connection. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to just touch up some of these pads as well here. Okay, pretty good. Let's take a, take a closer look at that. See, every once in a while you'll see these little tiny like little solder balls in between the part and sometimes that's not a big deal other times that means that you might actually have solder underneath the part and there's a risk that you could be shorting the part out so I'll usually clean that up by just in case I'll just kind of touch my the tip of the soldering iron there against one side of the part just to fully melt anything that might be in between there. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Let's, um, I'm going to solder um, some headers onto these boards and make sure that they take a program. Okay, so I had uh, these AT Mega 328s preloaded with bootloaders to support the Arduino IDE. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and hook these up now to a USB to serial converter. We're going to power it on at 3.3 uh, volts. And here we go. Let's see what happens. Come on. There we go. And I've got a very simple sketch. Uh, which I don't even have to show you to basically start up the serial port and print hello world to the serial monitor window. Um, let's see if it takes the sketch. Okay, the LEDs, TX and RX LEDs were blinking. And sh yep, we see hello world. So that's a good sign. So that at least... Uh, that tells us a few things. So we can successfully program the microcontroller. It can uh, run. So we know that the crystal 
uh, was soldered properly. The only thing we don't know is whether or not all of the I.O. pins are connected to the micro pins. Um, but based on visual inspections, uh, it seems okay. So anyway, that looks good on this one. And this was the one we did with the stencil. So now let's test the other one. Now this is the one that's got me a little nervous, <laughs> but let's go ahead and see how she does. So I'll just hit the upload button. Okay, looks like it's programming okay. Open up the serial monitor window, and sure enough, hello world. So we are good. That is my two cents on how to surface mount solder boards. <laughs> Thanks for watching.